Okay. Six people, that's good. How is everyone today? Good. Uh, Great. Yeah. Very uh, good. Uh, I'm right now. Happy Wednesday. Oh, Karen. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hey, Karen. Hi. It's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Yeah. Well, I have just the basic version of Zoom today, so it'll probably cut us off at 40 minutes. So I'll make sure that we get get underway. Our next book for next month is The Dutch House by Anne Patchett. And then the month after that, we will have The Language of Flowers by Vanessa Diffenbaugh. Okay. Oh, okay. I don't know that one. I mean, I didn't know we had picked it. I've read it. I, it was an executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> So if you, have any, <laughs> if you have any suggestions, we're, we're coming up quick to not having any uh, future books. So um, if you have any suggestions, just send them in so we can, we can either add them or vote on them. If we have enough to um, vote on, we'll do that. But today we are talking about The Witch of Blackbird Pond by Elizabeth George Spear. She um, was born in 1908 and died in 1994. And she won many awards for historical fiction novels, including two Newbery novels. Oh. Let's see, she was born in Melrose, Massachusetts. And she lived uh, most of her life in New England, which was the setting of, of most of her books. And she discovered her gift of writing at the age of eight and began composing stories while still in high school. And she went to Smith College, got a Bachelor of Arts degree in 1930, and a master's degree in English from Boston University. And she was an English teacher at several private Massachusetts high schools. But it sounds like writing was what she always intended to do. So that's really awesome. Yeah. Hmm. She's, she's pretty interesting. What did y'all think of the book? Oh, it was I like it was a good I, story. Yes, it was very good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It was a, a good enjoyable one. Now, I thought it was a good story. I didn't. I'm too old, obviously, to have read it in school, but I think it was the first time I've read it. Oh, me too. No, I had I had not read it before either. In fact, I had never heard of it before until somebody suggested it for this group. Thank you, really. I agree, and it was. A, I really thought it was an interesting look into the time, as well as when we're reading other coming of age stories. Interesting to see it placed uh, back then. So I was, I was very intrigued by it. I like historical novels, so I thought it was good, and I thought it had a great ending. Yeah. Yeah. I like the characters. Yeah, the characters are awesome. I like that too. So, it was, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say it was interesting to see how the characters changed over time. Yes. For some of them, some of, you know, how much they were enlightened or began to think about things. Yes. And the little child shall lead them. You know, it was just interesting between Prudence and Kit that, you know, there is great wisdom in children if, if you give them a little bit of a attention. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and it was so sad that the, the mother, uh, the, what was her name? Uh, oh. The nasty one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, Prudence, Prudence's mother, the mm -hmm. fact that she had, had downplayed her abilities for all that time and made her think that she wasn't smart and she, she couldn't learn. Um, and you wonder how many other instances there were of, of similar things. Cool. Right. That's true. It was a stark contrast where she grew up and where she ended up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. 
they were all colonies, you know, but they were very different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there, just didn't the seem, there didn't seem to be much joy in, you know, they were always doing something work, you know, it just, I, I guess survival, just, it didn't seem that there was any downtime. Right. Well, not only that there wasn't downtime, but that they weren't finding joy in the things that they were doing. Yes. That everything was, everything was a chore. A and and yeah. it seemed like happiness was frowned upon. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's true. And I thought it was interesting that they had houses for people to stay on Sundays they lived too far away to go home in between time. So I didn't realize that was ever a thing. So that was interesting. Yeah, no, I didn't I know that either. Uh uh. I thought that the lady, I can't remember her name, but the witch who they thought was a witch was quite interesting. Hannah. Hannah. Mm -hmm. And she enjoyed life. You know, yes, she did. Yes. Appreciative of every, you know, thing, nature, nature, what she had and considerate of others, even though they weren't very tolerant. So. Well, I thought the, the thing that and I found, one of the things that I found emotion. interesting, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, this is Mary. I just thought that uh, Hannah on occasion you know, it was very easy to relate to in that she shared, or at least the author shared her emotions in terms of, well, being, you know, referring back to her late husband and his accomplishments and, uh, you know, that, that it was certainly a void in her life that she filled in, you know, very unique way. She didn't go out and find other people to fill the void of his loss, but she then turned to this this world around her. Right. I, one of the things that I, that I noticed, and, and it's something that we see a lot today, so you can kind of equate it to things that, that go on in, in all times, was the suspicion of anything different or strange or, um, you know, that they couldn't accept anything that was different from what they were accustomed to. And I think that's pretty true for a lot of people today. Yes. Unfortunately. So, but we, so we, I, I don't and think we ever really learn from history. We just, we just think they to... were different, but we're, we're still the same. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> a very narrow viewpoint. Very yes. narrow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And how quick people are to judge to, to oh, yeah. not only just be uncomfortable or, mm -hmm. you know, mystified, but just, just judgmental. Well, my yeah. way is the right way and I don't need to consider anything else. It's different and it's wrong. I thought, oh, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. The problem there was that um, it being different could get you killed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's true. At, yeah. at certain points. And I often wonder how many intelligent women they killed that way. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. What'd you think of the husband? The, the father? The father, yeah. Well, yeah, he was totally intolerant. Yeah. Probably what age for so quickly that and all the, the uh, chores that they had. Rachel, the mom. Mm -hmm. well, remember yeah. they described her as being so carefree and fun loving and then when she got there, she was like a totally different person. So. Right. I think that still happens today. Yeah, it, you're, you're right. It was interesting that to me that, that she didn't really think of certain things, like when she jumped in for the teddy bear into the water, uh, you know, cause she had lost a lot, you, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very important for her, for that girl to have her teddy bear or whatever it was that fell in, you know, to the water. Right. My cat. I see her. <laughs> she thinks there's people on the, in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
the uh, the boyfriend, well, not really the boyfriend, the friend of hers was, um, you know, up and down with her. Couldn't understand yeah. her. You know? so the one who wanted to marry her or the one from the ship? The one from the ship. Okay. Ship. Yeah, yeah. The one who wanted to marry her was interesting too. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, he only wanted to marry her as long as she did what he wanted her to do. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. Well, the other one that was the other character that was interesting was uh, I think his name was John Holbrook, who was mm -hmm. the one who was studying to be a minister, who just didn't seem to have a mind of his own until he went off to. to the, the battlegrounds or whatever and then you know when he came back he decided i guess maybe life's too short um i need to start getting a mind of my own and uh agree to disagree with the the minister who was teaching him mm -hmm. so glad that he finally realized that he loved the young you know the sister that um She couldn't walk, right? Yes, she, she, was, she was disabled. Disabled. I haven't read it in a while, so I. But but I was so happy that you know he, he decided to go on it. Yes. Because he kind of got railroaded before from. Uh, yeah. And he had made an assumption that you know he was he was in love with her, and so you know he wasn't even allowed to speak, and she said, "Oh yes, yes, yes." <laughs> so, yeah. I think Elaine is trouble um, connecting. I see that she's here, but I don't know. I don't see where she's connecting. To audio, it says. Here I am, her. Mm. Let's see here. Winters must have been terrible. Yeah, as like oh, you're moving from some place like Barbados where it's warm all the time to some place where it's cold all the time, that must have been not only everything else changing, but that must have been a huge change and a shock too. Right. Sure. Yeah, just just not seeing the sun coming from somewhere where she's used to it being out all the time, and the winters there would have been very bleak. And very gray, and having survived five winters in Cleveland, I can attest to what what the gray will do to your uh, your mental state. Oh, that's true. That's true. I mean, when you think about like what they call it, the seasonal depression or whatever, mm -hmm. um, maybe that has a bit to do with the Puritans too. <laughs> well, except that many of them probably didn't know otherwise. That's true. If you don't know it, you miss it. Right. Yeah. Because they, even if they had recently arrived, came from a place where a lot of them see the sun very often. So. Yeah. That's yeah. true. I can't remember. Why were the two boys in the stockade? Why? Why? What did he, they do? I can't remember. Uh, Jack o' lanterns in the the house they were, the, the house that was being built, didn't they? Pumpkin in the windows and yes. Okay. Yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Hmm. He must have had money, that gentleman that was building that house, because he sent, you know, overseas for, you know, uh, some of his um, items. Yeah. It sounded like he was very well off and didn't have to worry about anything. Yeah. That's what made his son such a great catch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. I thought it would have been a good discussion, a book for a discussion with young adults for middle school and on, you know? Yeah, I, I think it would have been. Well, it, it is a young adult book, correct? Right. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. 
but I thought it'd be a good one to, you know, discuss with it. Yeah. Right. I'm trying to look at some of these. It was, it was kind of hard, I guess, since it is a, a um, juvenile or young adult book, I didn't find too many discussion questions, but I do have some. Um, let me see if I can find them. It says, Kit found peace from her busy, hard life in the meadows, and from that first moment, the meadows claimed her and made her their own. Why did they do this to her and not anyone else in her family, and what makes some people run to a person's home and others to nature? I know that I myself, you know, when I'm having a great day, being outside and seeing the um, sunshine and the flowers and everything, it does bring you kind of a, a peace for me anyway. But some people might find more comfort with other folks. Yeah. Well, but she was she was accustomed to being out in nature um, from in Barbados, where she had come from. Mm -hmm. So everything else was such a stark difference, the, the culture and everything else, that this was maybe somewhere where she felt more at home and at peace with the world um, than than all of the other constrictors. I don't I don't think her the family she lived with I her aunt I don't think that family had a concept of leisure time because whatever they did they just went from one task to the next task to, you know when they had a minute, they didn't think about going out and doing anything for themselves it was just work so, yeah, they had never really appreciated mm -hmm. except that her aunt must have grown up in another culture yes um, it's true doomed yeah so she was probably dominated by the husband Mm -hmm. Kind of sounded like it, yeah. Yeah, and the, and the, the culture that she was in at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she was all about keeping peace in the family and not causing any any. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, because when she found out, when the mother Rachel found out that Kit was going and visiting with Hannah. And she said, oh, no, no, you can't do that anymore because it'll really upset your uncle. Um, so that was another way where she was just keeping to or trying not to rock the boat in any way. Yes. Perfect example. Yeah, for sure. Or maybe even protecting her niece from consequences. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because they definitely knew what would happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And she didn't have much control over herself, so maybe she was just trying to be protective. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. I was glad that her uncle stood up for her during the court scene and, you know, said that she wasn't a witch. She was a smart girl, you know. Miss mm -hmm. I think he used the word misguided. I think, yeah. Yeah, which was pretty kind. Yeah. Well, that was something anyway. It, <laughs> yeah. it showed he wasn't all, you know, gloom, I guess, inside. <laughs> something could touch him anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I didn't read the entire book again, but I got part of the way. And Mercy, the one that was disabled, the daughter that was disabled, they said that. Um, she had him tied around her little finger, it sounded like. Is that Mary trying to dial in? Or <laughs> dial in? Yes. yes, it is. It is. Turn off the Turn phone. Off. Now the phone. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're having a we're having a thunderstorm here. Oh, really? oh. I just yeah. heard thunder here. Wow. I thought I just heard some rumbles, but I yeah. had to look out the window. Yeah, it looks kind of dark here, too. It's very sunny here. Oh, <laughs> it is here, too. It's it's too. Now in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you mean the picture? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
that I did that for one of my other my other book club. I just it was a stormy day and I just threw that out there for fun. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking about because who knows when we'll be able to get back in the library, but I'm considering whether permitting maybe having the next next meeting outside, everybody bring their own lawn chair and then also the computer for those who uh, prefer to join that way. What is your opinion? If we luck out and get a day where it's not god awful hot, then we yeah, can. Yeah, that's what I was hoping that um, September maybe won't be so bad. It may not be. And and that is the Dutch house, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that is something I'm kind of kicking around. Well, that would be good because it would be nice to see everybody in person mm -hmm. again. It really would. I zoom on my phone because my computer doesn't have a camera, so I would need a camera or just zoom on the phone. I will have to do. We'd be in person. Imagine. Oh, I know it. I might. Well, I'd love to meet outside. I would yeah. be nice. well, keep an eye on the weather and. And if nothing else, it'll be another Zoom meeting. I doubt if we'll be able to have in, uh, library programming by that time, but weather permitting, maybe we can meet out on the side of the library. I'll take the computer so we can join others who don't want to come in or who aren't that. able to. So that's, that's something I'm I thinking about doing. We could do that. And maybe we could come up with a slate of books then. Yes, that sounds great. Yes. I'd like to do that at the next meeting. Yes. Bring some suggestions of that about. Yes, we definitely need to pick some new books. Yeah. Hey, what did you think of the relationship of Hannah and the uh, guy on the ship, the boy? N Nat? Nat, yeah. He was my favorite character. Nat oh, was my favorite character. Yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah, I liked, you know, you, you couldn't have, well, when she started talking about her, her seafaring friend who brought her gifts and so forth, yes. you know, you start to picture someone older, maybe a, a sea captain or somebody who came in and, and would bring things. So I, I never visualized that it was going to be Nat. Um, so it was a nice surprise when it was. Yes. Hmm, hmm. And he brought he brought just thoughtful be, things that he knew she could open, use. I didn't hear what you said, Mary. I said, plus his youth, I think, and his exposure to an outside world made him more open and yeah. more considerate and right. comfortable, you know, both befriending her on the ship as well as having formed this relationship with a you know social outcast so that's why i liked it he was interesting and he was open to some uh taking some uh, risky steps mm -hmm. but he was aware that there was more than one way to live yes mm -hmm. yes yes very true I like that she that Hannah ended up with uh, Nat's grandmother um, after her house burned. I know. Yes, that was nice. <laughs> Very nice. Very considerate. Yes. Of both and, of those ladies. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it was helpful for both of them. Mm -hmm. How about when he came up with the boat? The new boat or ship. I, I wasn't expecting that. No, me neither. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Th that was cool. It was. There were just, I just was happy to see some glimmers of hope throughout when I kept, I was stuck back with uh, Kit being totally homesick and bereft of her 
happy former life, mm. I think I would have stopped right there. So I was glad that the story developed with the influence of, you know, good and bad people in her life. Have you read any of the, um, Spears' other books? I can't say that I have. No, yeah. I have. No, I know I have. But... I'd be interested, like you say, that her characters are really um, interesting. She has interesting characters and kind of balances her story out with, like you say, the bad characters and the good characters. I would be interested in reading more. Right. I wouldn't mind. Look like you mentioned that. Go ahead. I didn't, go ahead. I interrupted. I'm just on a lag here, so you don't hear me for seconds after I've spoken. <laughs> I would be interested. I don't. I, I wasn't even aware she had written other things. So oh we'll have to check our list here in the in the library and see if you have any others by her. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind reading another book by the, the author of The Dutch House. Oh, really? Oh, oh. Anne Patchett. She's good. Oh, yeah. she is good. You know what? I really liked some of her early things, and then there's some kind of in the middle between that and the, like Bel Canto and The Dutch House that I really, they were either just mediocre or just didn't care for them at all. Right. I agree. Or whatever. I whatever. agree with that. I don't know. I haven't read any. I've been experimenting, though, in all this time. I've, this has broadened my horizon. Definitely. Mine, too. Kathleen, have you read Bel Canto? No, I've I've only read that one book by her. I I kind of read a lot of historical mysteries, and I read them, you know, from from older older cultures and things like that. So some of these are the first time I've read some, okay. and I, I'm enjoying them, and I'm even getting into some of the Amazon first reads, you know, before they come out, and they're free. So I, I've been broadening. Good. I think you'd like Bel Canto. I think you would maybe enjoy it. Yeah, maybe I will read that one. I read, I thought that that one sounded good. Yeah. Or people that said it was good. Or somebody I even I know said it was good. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. I like that one a lot too. Um, I didn't particularly. I guess I think one of them was that uh, I was in another book group and we read one called Run, which nobody in the book group liked at all oh. um and then commonwealth was okay but yeah, nothing that, special I read that. Yeah. yeah do we have copies of duck house Miguel? uh let me see if they're available hang on a second there's one on overdrive karen because that's where i read it okay all right i did, mm -hmm. I did too i think I think I, hey, I got to tell you this book that we just read, Michelle had recommended um, North Car NC Kids, and I got on for free and got that book. Oh, so really? You know, mm -hmm. Yeah. So all you had to have was your uh, uh, card, your uh, library card. Oh, okay. Yeah. There may be other books. I think most of our books that we read probably wouldn't be on that particular right platform but it doesn't hurt to check it doesn't hurt to check we do have the large print of the dutch house and it's available right now and i hate to say it i kind of like large print <laughs> and the audiobook is also available which is read by tom hanks i heard that was very good really? at first i was like oh this is weird that's but the more i listen to it that's how i read yeah. Well, and when I was That's reading I it, I was I was envisioning him talking, oh. uh, since I knew that he was the the narrator for uh, the the audio book. <laughs> oh, excuse oh, me. Bless, bless you. you. Thank you. It was very good, but and we have those available. At this uh, point. Michelle, Michelle, did you find any other Elizabeth Spears books in yes. the library? Yes. At for Quimmins, 
The only other one we have is the signs of the beaver. But Washington has calico captive. Shepherd Proof has the bronze bow. And Carol Delco has the bronze bow. So we when do you think we'll resume the inner office loans? I have not heard. Uh, I don't know when the governor is talking again. It's probably going to be after the state. He opens the state to stage three. And then uh, I'll open up a little bit more. Three, okay. so I'm not sure when he's, he's um, going to issue his next that. order. When the governor opens the state up to stage three, we'll probably open up a little bit more too. Good. It looks like we have about seven more minutes before Zoom cuts us off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, has anybody else read some other good books? I've read some excellent books. Oh my gosh, what do you read? Uh, the Vanishing Half. I'm doing that right now. Are you? You like it? So far, yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was I very good. Like it. That's on five to read. Yeah, let's let's consider that one. Oh. That would be a really good book for discussion. Okay. What else, Cheryl? Uh, Dear Edward. Oh, that was good. You read that? Uh, yes, finished yeah. it. Yes. That one sounds yep. good. I really like that. And then the one that I really, really have enjoyed is The Poet X, which is a novel in verse. Um, oh. And also Clap When You Land, which is also a novel in verse by the same author. Oh, interesting. Um, those, those are really good. I would, I would suggest reading at least one of those in the group because just because it's very different. Um, and I had never read a, a novel in verse before. before. I haven't either. No. Oh, I that sounds have interesting. Cheryl, did you get it at the library with us? Uh, yeah, uh, the Poet X I had in a hard in a regular book. The uh, Clap When You Land was on Overdrive. Okay. And they could be available on NC Kids because I think they're classified as YA. Oh, okay. 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 Ooh. Clap when you what? Clap when you land. It's the story of. Um, Two sisters, only they don't know that they're sisters, that the, the father had actually two families, one in the Dominican Republic and one in New York. Um, and I'm not giving anything away by telling that part of it. And then he, he dies in a plane crash. Cool. Elizabeth, the Poet X is on NC Kids. Oh, it is? Okay, Poet X. The other one was not. Okay. Are they, both, are, they are, both in verse? are they both in verse? I've never read anything in verse. Yes, they both they both are. That must be interesting. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's and well, and they go they go I read quicker than a novel. Oh. I read one I uh, only made it through two chapters. And it was recommended Cheryl on our Those Who Want Books site, but I didn't care for it. It was called Red at the Bone. R -E -D, oh, okay. Red yeah, no, I haven't, I haven't read that I one did. yet. The library had it. It was a new release from Michelle, but I have it on my front seat to take back without reading. Oh. I just couldn't, I couldn't follow it. It was too disjointed and I, I wasn't picking up a story. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good when we make the decision to not read it because there's so many good books out, right. you know? Yes, I absolutely agree. I always used to feel sad, but eh, I'm over it. <laughs> oh, I know. I used to feel like I had to had to plod through to the bitter end. Yeah. You know, even though I was hating every second of it. Not, any, not anymore. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. too short for that. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> the goldfish. Well, we all and have that. people process and love the goldfish. I just, I finally said, you know, after three or four tries, I said, no, I'm not, not going to finish this. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, I did and that with one recently that I had gotten. Mind. Yeah, we do process differently. What? Yeah. It's very visual. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. And I think sometimes it's just the time that we're reading it. You know, it may not be a good time for that particular book. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. I have another book that um, both my daughter and my sister recommended highly, but told me not to read it now. And it's <laughs> called A Little Life. Yes, A Little Life. And life? I think it's something that would engender a lot of discussion. A Little Life. Oh, okay. Your storm has reached the library. I got to run out and shut my windows. You got two, about two and a half minutes oh. left. <laughs> oh yeah, it started raining okay, here. Okay, Michelle, thank you again. Yeah. Okay, it's late here. It's so good seeing everybody. Yeah, it's good to see you. Hey. Maybe next thank time. You. Yes, Karen. Yeah. Happy reading. Yeah, you too. Karen's heading to Florida. Thank you, I will. Karen. Thank you.